But okay, <laughs> now let's get back to yeah. what we're going to talk about. And remember, in the last uh, episode that we did, we went and we zeroed in on the word Mahmed or, uh, yeah. or Mahamadin. And you were very good as amazing because you were able to go back to the, to the Hebrew and show us not only is this a... Uh, reference the reference that they're pointing to is actually not only is it plural it also is cannot it cannot be muhammad because it's actually referring to in our case for those of us who are christians we see this as being uh jesus christ but let's you say that there are some other references to muhammad you're gonna well actually i went through i went through three of the four already in the previous video that was mahmadim mahmad as in the the, he, the hebrew point of mahmadim and mahmad the hebrew word singular plural and singular, Mahmadim referring to the bride of, Is sorry, the bridegroom of Israel. That's a Jewish reference. Mahmad referring to the temple of, his, of, of Israel. It's a Jewish reference. And how these two from the, the, the third point was the Christian point of view of both of these as being Jesus Christ. These are references to Jesus Christ from the, from the Christian point of view. Um, and there is the fourth thing which I want to talk about is another word, Muhammad, which exists. I'll just share a screen to be able to to show you this share screen so here we are this page is uh, up now um, and this as you can see I've got open as this Jewish encyclopedia.com and we've got the word Muhammad there Muhammad can you see that and it says more correctly Muhammad it's pronounced Muhammad but it's actually spelt spelt Muhammad I've got this picture here to just show you the difference between the spellings here we have actually I've put down on references for the previous video I didn't get around to showing those are the references on the side, reference John and Matthew and Mark and Matthew again and, and, and Revelations. Those are references to Jesus as the temple um, of God. And underneath those are the references to Jesus as the groom of God. But here in the middle here, I've got the word Muhammad in Arabic, and I've separated out the, with red lines. And I put a little arrow showing you read it this way. You read it from right to left. And I put underneath the letters M, H, M, D, so you can see them. And I've put underneath corresponding Hebrew letters, M, H, M, D, meaning treasure, delight, which is what we talked about in the previous video. And here is the word which we're talking about now, which is Muhammad, which is also pronounced Muhammad. But this is spelt without an H, it's spelt with an Ain. It's M, Ain, M, D. That's like, that would be like M, A, M, D, Muhammad. Very interesting, because this is the word that John of Damascus uses, as opposed to all the others before him who were using Muhammad. Very interesting indeed. Because it's, it's a suggestion which I, I have is that it, that's because when John of Damascus was writing, by that time the Umayyads had suppressed Muhammad. They were, they were not interested in Muhammad. If you look at the, even in the Hadiths, all the, the later Hadiths, the, 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 the people who are on the Umayyad side, really, they say very nasty things about their prophet. You think, if you're going to say that against you, about your prophet you you clearly hate him i mean there's no reason why you'd say such horrendous things about a person unless you hated him and i think it's possible that some of those things actually came from the omayyads because they really hated him and they wanted to get rid of this idea and they, they had their own muhammad which was their office now muhammad as i'll go back to the the hebrew page there the, the jewish page so here it is jewish encyclopedia and it's articles, article 10,222-Mat-Ahmad. Um, and this was a group, this is a governing body which governs the synagogue or the, the Jewish community in a town. So the Mahmad was a governing body with several heads in, this, in, in the body. And this dis description available on the Jewish encyclopedia um, is based on the Muhammad of the Muhammad of the London synagogue, the London Sephardic synagogue, which had, I think, five heads um, instead of seven. Um, but that's that's the that sort of corresponds to, uh, the, the, and that's the, the word which is used in, in John of Damascus in the, in the in the Greek. If you look, he doesn't use the H. Um, it's Muhammad. So I jump in. Yeah. When John of Damascus uses it, he you get the strong impression he's talking about a person, not an office. So can you explain why he used this spelling if he was actually, seems to be talking about a person, not an office? Well, it, it, it's, uh, I think if you're, if you're not part or not in, in, in the group, you might not understand who the, the leader was. You might think the leader was one person rather than one group, but it's a, it's a democratic sort of group. Um, which is the leader, it is the leader of, of the community. So, um, but it's, it's an office. So 
it's referring to the office of, of, of Muhammad. Now, it, as I said, there, there, there can be seven heads or there can be five heads. There could be less than that. There could be three. Um, maybe there was a time when it came down to mean just one. But I think this is what it comes, I think this is what it's about. This was a, a, a Jewish uh, uh, idea. And the Umayyads were, um, uh, uh, not, they, they were, uh, they started off, uh, if you if think about the early coins of, of, of Muawiyah, while he was uh, a client state of Byzantine Empire, they had crosses on them. Um, and they had Muhammad written on them. They had references to Muhammad on these this, this little coins with uh, little crosses on them. Um, but later, Muawiyah says some very nasty things about Jesus. He's, it's like he changes his mind and he, 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 he says, he, he comments, I uh, can't remember where the reference is, but there's a reference to, to the, if I find it, we'll put it up on a, on a, on a note, annotation. Um, it's uh, when he, he says that they, they are worshipping a dead, their dead God, Jesus. And it's quite a turnaround from having crosses on your coins and being a, a client state to Byzantium and having crosses on your inscriptions, you know, the, the, the inscriptions of the Hamatgada baths, for example, he starts with the cross there. And then suddenly turning around later and saying, you know, this is your, you're worshiping a dead God, but our God is alive, for example, like this. So um, it's like there's a kind of a conversion of the, of the Umayyads to, to, to Islam, or I would say a conversion away from Gnostic uh, Muhammad, uh, uh, respect for the Gnostic Christian Muhammad, and instead uh, they may have a Mamid, as which is the word which John of Damascus uses as opposed to Mahmed at that time. After all the references to Mah Mehmet have sort of disappeared, then then suddenly we have John of Damascus with Mamid instead. So which is and, the office? Which is the office? Which is the yeah. the? It's funny. The office is actually <laughs> the office was running is is uh, is early Islam, and uh, that is actually Mahmed. Mahmed, sorry, we call it Mahmed as well. But can I just um, make a point here? Yes. This could possibly allow for an amalgamation of an idea of Muhammad later when they're creating a biography, yeah. where they yeah. take bits and pieces, the historical yeah. Iyas and, and various other people later, because if it's not viewed as an office, then it's possible yeah. to think of it as a collective rather than one individual. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, 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 it's very much sort of replaced, but they couldn't replace and get rid of completely all these references to the sort of Gnostic Christian Muhammad. So they had to find one person to sort of fit the bill. Uh, and I think they chose Iyas as the earliest Arab king that they could for the Lahmids because they, they were primarily from that side. This is the Abbasids decided this. I don't think the Umayyads did that. The Umayyads wouldn't have chosen Iyas because the Umayyads were essentially from a Ghassanid sort of Palmyrian sort of side of things. They were Western and they would have chosen one of their own people to be the Mahmid if they had thought about it. But I think they actually rejected the concept of Muhammad as the, as the, the Gnostic Christian uh, Lord, the bridegroom, uh, temple of God. They rejected this and they went for a Mahmid as uh, this, this Jewish Mahmid instead. Um, as, you, as you know, in, in, in Islam, there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of things are taken from Judaism, not just uh, the, the references in the Talmud, but um, also the practices, the way they, the, the way they, um, they uh, live their lives. A lot of it is taken from, from, from Jewish, from Judaism, it's actually taken from Judaism. So there was a, a heavily amount of Judaization happening to these Gnostic Christians. And I think what happened with the Umayyads is that they became very Judaized. Now, while, you're, while, you, while you can be friends with, Christian, with, with Jews as a, as, a, as a Christian, you can be friends with Jews as a Christian, when you become a Judaizer, you, you really want to kind of replace Jews. You don't want to be their friends anymore. Some interesting points about the, the, the Gnostic materials which became the Quran, for example, we have this word alazina hadu, which is translated as Jews, literally means those who guide. We also have another word which was translated as Jews later, Yahud, which they translate. It's not really rational that this could mean Jew because the word would be Yahudi, just like in Hebrew, Yahudi would be a Jew. So why did they choose Jude instead of uh, uh, Judean? Why did they choose Yahud instead of Yahudi to, be, to refer to Jew? And because it didn't refer to Jews, I, my, 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 my idea is that this actually, from the Gnostic point of view, refers exactly to who Yahud is. Yahud is Judas. 
Jude, without the, the Greek suffix Judas. So to be a Yahud was to be a Judas, to be a traitor, but to be a Lazina Hadu, those who guide, this was the phrase used for Jews in the original Gnostic materials. But as the, as the Muslims become more and more powerful, or the Arabs becoming more and more powerful and, and under the Umayyads, they want to replace those who guide. They don't want to have Jewish guides anymore. Um, they, they, so they become their own Muhammad. They become their own, their own guides. It's a kind of so stepping out theology. So they're stepping out of the shadows of the Jews, essentially. Yeah. And standing on their own feet. That's right. And as they step out of the shadows of the... You see, Gnostic Christians are very interested in Jewish Kabbalah. They're very interested in Jewish scriptures and Jewish traditions. They don't want to be Jews. They want to, they know that, for example, in Paul, it says that the Jews are the ones who have been entrusted with the oracles of God. So they want to find out what are the secrets that the Jews know. They can, they, that, that they can understand more deep sort of spiritual Gnostic ideas about Jesus Christ and see what was he saying from a Gnostic point of view. But when, that's why they're called Alazina Hadu, those who guide. For example, it says, oh, you who believe, uh, whether you are Jews or whether you're Christians or whether you are Sabians, whoever believes in Allah in the last day, they will have no fear upon them, neither shall they grieve. The phrase it uses in that verse is Alazina Hadu, those who guide. And that is translated as Jews. But in, when it says nasty things about Jews in the, in the Quran, it uses the word Yahud, Judas. So that's a quite an interesting difference because they were not referring to the same thing. But under the Umayyads, uh, they can't stop the fact that everybody knows Alazina Hadu means Jews. So they just add to that and say, but the Jews are the Judases as well, the Hood. And that's why we don't like them. So they sort of replace the Jews. So there's displacement theology. They replace the Jews as their, their themselves instead. So they become Judaized as opposed to being interested in Jewish tradition. They now re re regard themselves as the, the new Jews. And that's actually a phrase which, by the way, Timothy of Baghdad uses to refer to them. He calls them the new Jews. He calls them new Jews. That's what the, the Muslims are. So, so, so I, I believe as new Jews and replacing the Jews, they would have had their own Mahmed. And that's what John of Damascus is referring to. And it's this word here, you see here, which is also Mahmed. So it's not got a scriptural basis at all. There's nothing in scripture. I have actually opened up a scriptural reference to it, if I can get there. Here, I think it is. There it is. Might, we have might, might it suggest that there was um, a community of leaders who were behind the creation of the Quran initially? Or oh, I that think so? that's probably the, the, like the uh, uh, Abdul Malik's council on uh, uh, who, who were creating the, and revising the Quran were definitely the, Mah the Mahmed believe that interesting and, yeah. and, and i think this is why john of damascus refers it to it refers to it as a as a kind of a, a foreshadow as the antichrist a sort of foreshadow of the antichrist because it's one governing body with seven heads and and that would have been review viewed i think from a from a from a from a from a uh, the, the book of revelations talks about the beast rising from the sea which which from the point of view as uh, of of the um uh, from if you're in Baghdad, the sea is is either south or, or it's going to be to the far west with the the, Arab, the Arabs in the west. So so I think that and John sorry John of Damascus was in uh, Damascus, not Baghdad. I mean, yeah. He he's thought the sea for him is only going to be the Mediterranean. So that's going to be the the Muslims in the, of, of the Holy Land have got their own Mahmed. So this kind of, this this kind of Mahmed has risen out of the sea. So he's oh there's the beast with the seven heads. So he's he's sort of seeing this as a, as a foreshadow of the Antichrist. So this yeah. is, uh, the, and by the way, of course, the, these new Jews are, are, are not actually Jews. You know, they say they, they, they're more like the kind of, again, from the book of Revelations, this, this synagogue of Satan, uh, those who say they are Jews, but are not, they're a synagogue of Satan, you know that from the, so, so yeah. John of Damascus is, is, I think, seeing the Mamed of uh, the Umayyads and saying, there you go, that's the beast. Um, this is what we were told about beforehand, and that's what. But he's saying that they are misleading Christians. He doesn't say that they're, they're. He doesn't talk about Islam as a new religion. He's just talking about this. This Mahmed is, is misleading Christians, and I think he regards the Gnostic Christians as being basically ignorant Christians, and that they're being led astray by this Mahmed, which is this governing body of the of the, of the Umayyads, which is this, which from his point of view has risen out of the Mediterranean Sea. So that's why he's making those references, I think. 
Is it Joe, just so you? just so everybody is aware of what we're talking about, John of Damascus, he is he would have been in the courts there. He would have been uh, working amongst the Muslims in the eighth century. He dies in seven forty nine. So he is there as the Umayyads are decreasing and the Abbasids are increasing. So he's watching all this happen. He would have been around. Yeah. In the, so this is material that he would be priv privy to. Uh, again, this is uh, we need to show this on a timeline. We don't have one in front of us, but it'd be good just so Go we make sure that people. Wikinoah.org. We have a good timeline on Wikinoah.org in the Islam's Origins page. So have a look on that. And well, you'll you're see really pushing Wiki aren't you? Good <laughs> yeah, man. yeah. Go Wikinoah. Wikinoah. So join in, everybody. Come on, let's join in. We might be able to get this finished by 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 Christmas. So there you go. So <laughs> okay, so fantastic. you've got this. The 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 thing with. My, Okay, we've, so, we're now looking at what John, John of Damascus said. Yeah. Go ahead, and let's try to bring this down to show that, uh, how this can be applied. Well, I've, well I've, it's, I've got a couple of references to, Ma, uh, to Muhammad. It's actually this word, doesn't, not like Muhammad, which actually occurs in the Hebrew Bible. The word Muhammad on its own doesn't. We, are, we have Mamadam, Muhammad, which means and Muhammad. That's probably the best with two, two occurrences here. And then we've got Umimma Madeka. So it's not, uh, but th these references don't have any kind of significance of his servants, the attendants of his waiters, of his servants, the attendants of his ministers. It's got no reference to temples, no reference to the Lord, no reference to anything. It's, it's very minimal. It's just a governing body. They translate it here as, as attendants. Um, so it doesn't have any reference to scripture. And that's kind of also in keeping with the Umayyads uh, I, I, uh, idea they, they've sort of divorced after Abdul Malik they've divorced the Quranic materials from the previous scriptures they don't care what the previous scriptures say they have not any interest in it at all whatsoever they simply are interested in trying to keep the Arabs together and organize them politically and they have their mama do this and they don't care that that's not got any kind of reference or anything it, be, because they regard themselves, and that's chapter seven, we looked at earlier when it says the light unto the nations, they regard themselves as the light unto the nations. They've replaced mm -hmm. Israel as the light unto the nations, and they are now the light of the nations. They are now the, the Nabi for the Ummi, the, 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 the Gentile prophet as it's translated nation, late, later. By the way, Ummi, Umat Ha'olam, these are the nations of the world. So Israel is the light unto the Umat Ha'olam, the light unto the nations. This is the same word Ummi, which they say means Gentile or unlettered. So it's actually the, the prophet to the Gentiles has turned into the unlettered prophet later. I believe the Abbasids did that. The Abbasids created this. But the idea of a prophet to the Gentiles was, uh, was, was the Umayyads uh, regarding of their own sort of central core government uh, 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 and, and to unite all of the ignorant uh, Christians as John of Damascus regards them and pagan Arabs and try and create a new thing and, and to, to stop the wars, incessant wars, which have been or civil wars, which have been breaking out between them. And I think in this, uh, the pacifist, uh, mainly pacifist um, Gnostic Christians, because the Gnostic Christians like Manichaeans and Mandians, they, they were super pacifists. They, they lost out badly and they got stomp, stamped out of existence, really. Although they still do have this kind of Gnostic traditions in parts of Azerbaijan in the north again. Uh, amongst groups called the Alevis, and um, uh, they, they would be like the Shiites, sort of Sufi, Sufi Shiites. They're not Sufis, they're Shiites and they're Sufis at the same time. So the spiritual Shiites um, kind of continue this sort of tradition where they have this trinity in, in, in spiritual Shiism. But anyway, this, uh, that's beside the point for this. This point is about how the, uh, the word Muhammad can also mean a, a specific governing Jewish body, which I think is what John of Damascus was referring to when he talks about the, a, 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 pre, a pre taste of the Antichrist. Okay, this is exciting. Now, you, you, you mentioned that the, 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 I, I don't know if you want to write, encapsulate this, conclude this, come bring us to some type of uh, some type concluding remarks. Can you do that now so that we can uh, then? Uh, 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 unpack uh, really finish with this one. We went off on a few little tangents there, but trying yeah. to get back to this just this one last idea of the the office of Muhammad. Okay, so this uh, little video, I suppose, was trying to focus on a different interpretation of the word behind the word Muhammad. Um, we talked about in the previous video the word Muhammad as a, as a Gnostic Christian uh, concept referring to Jesus Christ or the Lord. 
Uh, but here's another view of Muhammad being a Jewish, uh, a governing body for a, for, a, for, a, for a Jewish community, or as I'm suggesting, a Judaized community, a community who, who, who believe that they're as, good, they're as good as Jewish and they don't need the, the Jews anymore. Um, so, uh, and, but they, they are organized along similar lines that Jews are organized, organized on. And, and so they have the Muhammad, which I think, and that point of my, my point of, of, of this point was, was to, to, and my suggestion is that this is what John of Damascus is talking about when he says Muhammad. Although it's translated, translated from John of Damascus documents as Muhammad, they put an aspiration of the A, the A there is no H in, in what John of Damascus is talking about. He hasn't used, and it's not just an H, it's not an aspirated H, it should have been a Kha, it should have been the, 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 the Chai, the, the, same, the, the same as Christos. So, but, but they haven't used that word, they just translated, they, the word which John of Damascus uses is exactly as Mamed. And I think that's not an accident. I think that's exactly because what he's talking about is a Mamed, which had seven heads and was a governing body. And that's why he thought it was uh, a, a, a pretaste of the Antichrist. Um, so this is another interpretation. This is not a Gnostic Christian interpretation. This is a, 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 an interpretation from a, a, a Jewish point of view of, of how a group of Gentiles thought they were as good as better than Jews, could replace the Jews, but organize themselves along the same lines as the Jews. They were not really Jews, but they were, they were presenting themselves as the new Jews, if you like, the new Israel, the, 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 new, the new owners of the Holy Land. Okay. Um, and they, they had an organization which was an imitation of the Jewish Muhammad. And that was sort of like the anti Muhammad, if you like. So it was not the Jewish Muhammad; it was a fake okay. Jewish Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So that's, okay. that's another interpretation, and that would be from the Umayyad side later, not the not the proto-Muslim Islam. This is much closer to how Islam began. And then the, the Abbasids then later, another fifty okay, years, now, sixty un, years un, later. And share your screen now, and, and then let's let's, uh, let's yeah. so the three of us can talk. Yeah. There. Okay. Go ahead, Mel. Why don't you jump in here and then let's bring this to a conclusion, this one to a conclusion. Yeah, so the thought that occurred to me is uh, when the Abbasids start using Hadiths to establish uh, Islamic laws, they seem to be following the Jewish method of mm. establishing laws which were based on case studies and applying them to stories from Muhammad's time. So I kind of see how this council could sort of um, be seen into the Abbasid period. I don't know, Joe, if, if that tallies with your understanding of it? Yeah, my, my idea, I believe that the, the Umayyads had already established this, that this was up and running in the time of the Umayyads. I think that the Abbasids, because you know that the traditional story of, it says that the Abbasids began as a kind of what's called Mawali, this kind of opposing group to the, the Umayyads. But in, when they took power, they, they converted. They, they actually became Sunni. They adopted the Sunni religion. So I think that they they adopted it again, it's politics. They just want to unite their empire. And they try to amalgamate and, and create, uh, so, so, so Islam as we know it was created by the Abbasids, but the forerunner to Islam as we know it was there with the Umayyads. But, 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 but the, the earliest proto-Islamic sort of Gnostic Christian version, that's really gone. That, that didn't make it into the final cut. It, the Abbasids took ideas from that, mixed it with the Umayyads ideas and created this new thing. The only people who almost preserve that are like the Alevis, you know, they still have the, they, they have a kind of a Eucharist they, and they believe in a Trinity still. So um, they're a very secretive group and they're extremely badly persecuted right now, this very moment in Turkey, for example. Um, Okay, right, so this, this is fascinating. So what we're doing and what you're doing is much of the, what we have been doing, and that is looking and seeing what's on the ground, seeing what uh, were the discussions that were happening at that time. Here you have John of Damascus. He's there in the Muslim, Muslim courts. He's working amongst them. Uh, so he sees what's going on. He sees as this discussion is happening. He's there during the Umayyad uh, dynasty, but he 
lives right up until when the Abbasids take over. And it looks like what you're saying, Joe, is that Islam, as we know today, is an Abbasid creation redacted back yeah. and redacted back yeah. to the seventh century, which doesn't have yeah. any antecedents over there. But you're saying that these, this whole premise of Muhammad or this present for of this name Muhammad could have been something that was re, that was pulled out of that and then re redefined as an office. Yeah. And in this case, it was an office of group people and i think that this is uh, this is fascinating because you're going and you're yeah. looking and you're seeing you're putting what's in our what we see written and you're putting it into a historical context you're putting it into yeah. a timeline you're seeing how the sequence goes and you're seeing how the political the political exigencies that were happening at that time also had an awful lot of impact all of us to how the theology would then bear out and the opposite yeah. didn't want to destroy everything that had gone behind what they had have done and actually what you're telling me is that they actually adopted it and they took it they on amalgamated it amalgamated it okay that's yeah, probably a they, better they, word they, they took the gnostic uh christian muhammad and they mixed it with the umayyad uh Muhammad. i mean this is the, looking at the non non-muslim sources they took what john of damascus is referring to and they took what for example sebios is referring to maybe sebios was referring to a Muhammad, maybe or maybe he was talking referring to I, I think sebios was referring to a Muhammad, but i think that Thomas the Presbyter is, to, is referring to the to to Arabs of of Christ. Tayyid the Mahmed, I think, means basically Arabs of Christ, Arabs of the of the of the, of the Gnostic Christ, um, and and they've amalgamated the Gnostic Christ with this. Uh, ma they've taken Mah Mah Mahmad and they've taken Muhammad and they've mixed the two, and they've created Muhammad as we know, <laughs> no, as we know him. Just based so people on know, the historical EOS. Based yeah, on the historical EOS. Remember, historical the historical yeah. EOS is from the 7th century, so is Thomas the Presbyter, so yeah. is yeah. Uh, the, the Chronicles of Sabaeus. These are all yeah. from the 7th century. John of Damascus yeah. would be from the 8th century. So by the yeah. time the, uh, the 8th century Abbasids, they eradicate and destroy the, uh, the, the Umayyads, that then starts to take shape, and that's now why you understand why almost all the theology yeah. starts to be introduced in the 9th and 10th century. Yeah, so follow yeah. the timeline, when you can John see how Damascus this all is just fits. Just before the Abbasids take control, John of Damascus is he's before they before they do that. He's at the last the last sort of vestiges of the Umayyad side. Yeah, so the, yeah. the, the, the 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 Abbasids are kind of after John of Damascus. Something new is happening. Yeah. So this is a bit John of Damascus they, dies in 749. The Abbasids take over in right. 749. Right. Can I yeah. can I just jump in and, and just make yeah. a point? The, the Tafsirs seem to be ignorant of these meanings of Muhammad. Would they haven't got a clue. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. They're they're just in. I think they, the Abbasids really <laughs> didn't care. I think the yeah. Abbasids were mainly the remnant of 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 Sass Sassanian Sassanids, who had been forcibly converted. They didn't really care. They just did what they had to 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 unite their empire and basically reestablish some kind of Persian empire. So it was but, actually quite cynical then, really. Cynical, yeah. absolutely. I think the Abbasid creation of Islam is completely cynical and was just basically trying to appease everybody on the lowest common denominator. Uh, there are some things they couldn't escape. They had, to, they had to deal with that by making some fantasy story because too many people knew that. But they, they basically worked with what they had. They had a choice, massacre everybody. By the way, you know that that's actually what they did. They killed everybody who could read in Central Asia. Did you know that? <laughs> they killed everybody who could read. So, um, but they had that option to kill everybody who could read across the entire empire, which they couldn't do. They tried it in Central Asia. Um, or they could try to twist the, basically change the narrative, you know. They Propagandize. Yeah. Well, this is where the, the, whole setup, the whole setup of a new Mecca then fits nicely yeah. in with all of this. Well, now before we go, Joel, this has been thank you so much. You're bringing in a whole nother no tangent, a whole nother criteria, a whole nother set of studies. Uh, 20 years you've been working on this. You've been It's excellent to see where you're going with it. Mel, before we go, I want you to say something now. Uh, how do you fit this all together now, uh, concerning the political structures that were going on up in Hira and in Kufa, and that was also happening uh, in those centers? When I, remember, we're talking about, if you're talking about Kufa and Hira, you're talking about Sassanid, you're talking about Persian area. If you could just say one or two ideas that you have uh, been uh, if you have picked up on what Joe is saying concerning your paradigm and concerning what you've in Marad have come up with that the, all of this happens in the 8th and the 9th century much further north can you then understand how then Joe's is actually amalgamating and is helping helping you out coming from a whole different position yeah so my my sense of it is that there was a historical figure called Iyas he was the 
a major instigator in, in terms of the expansion of the Arabs into Persia and into the Byzantine areas. And then later in places like Hira and Kufa, we have uh, the beginnings of the Quran being created. And it was in the context of the various academies. Um, and so we can see all the, how the, the Mandaics, the Gnostic Christians all got involved in, in this big uh, hodgepodge and mixture. Um, and uh, there's a lot, obviously, that Joe has shared tonight, which is new for me. So it's just going to take a bit of absorbing and uh, trying to understand it. It's for me. It's a it's a new perspective. The idea of uh, Thomas the Presbyter may not be talking about a prophet called Muhammad. You know, when he talks about the Tayyaye of Muhammad, it's the idea that he might actually be referring to the Tayyaye of the Gnostic Christians. Well, this is a new one for me. Um, so I may have to go back to the drawing board and uh, rethink my ideas. Maybe it's possible that he's actually talking about an individual and the Gnostic Christians. Perhaps there's a double meaning there. It's hard to, to say, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a very interesting new uh, development. So thank you, Joe. That's, 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 that's no problem. I mean, of course, they could have easily regarded their leader as a new messiah. And when he failed to build the temple, rebuild the temple, that could be why they decided, why the, the Umayyads decided to, to do what they could to build the temple there, because they were, and they were planning to say that it had happened, it, had, they, it had succeeded. Because, of course, the Messiah has to rebuild the new temple. From the Christian point of view, Jesus Christ's body is the temple and was rebuilt on the resurrection. But from the Judaized point of view, when you've rejected the divinity of Jesus, you still need a temple. Mm -hmm. So, okay, listen, Joe, thank you so much. Mel, thank you so much for bringing Joe on board. Those of you who have been listening, let's hear uh, exactly your response to it. You do have responses, I'm sure, but there is gonna, this will cause a discussion and a debate. Right at the bottom, make sure you get it out there. Joe and Mel, can you make sure you keep on top of it and try to respond as you see it? And what we'll do, Joe, we will, what we've done in the past and what I've done with Mel and with others, as people write and as we see good questions that are coming up, we might want to do a Q&A period where we'll bring you back again. It'll probably be in about another three, two or three weeks because I know you're going to be going on vacation with your family. But when you get when you have free time, what we'll do is we'll come and bring you back and we'll take throw these questions at you and then we'll see how you respond to it. Because because this is how we this is how we give and take and this is how uh, you uh, these are what we, I always call these white papers we're putting them out there as white papers yeah. what if scenarios and these are things that you've been working on for 20 years now let's get other people to listen to you let's get other people to hear what you're saying let's get other people to respond to you let's get other people to discuss with you and even confront you and that's just going to help you yeah. because it's like irons a sharpening iron and I, I want to thank Absolutely. you for coming on board I know you're not permitted to show your face I know it is thank you it, uh, you have had problems in the past because you have, people do have found out who you are. And that's why we want to make sure that we do keep your, your security uh, is important. Mel and I, nonetheless, we will continue to br make this as a platform for people to bring these new ideas forward because we really do want to know. We really do want to uh, pack how Islam did emerge, how it began, what, where did it come from? And what we're finding, as you're going to see, it's not the Islam of the traditions. This is not the Islam of the Abbasids. This is not the, the Islam of the 9th and 10th century redacted back onto the 7th century. We're seeing now that we're, we're getting an entirely different scenario. It's an exciting scenario because this is really how it did happen from what the evidence does show. Joe, you've been a great blessing. Thanks for, uh, uh, for coming on board. Mel, thanks Thank for you. you again. Thank you. And we'll okay. probably see the two of you back in about two or three weeks. We'll come back and we'll answer your questions. And from there, we'll talk off and probably we'll have to re rejig, as Mel has saying. He's now going to have to rethink some of his paradigm. Well, this is possible part of the process. We want to be able to be open to do just that. We go where the evidence leads. God bless you. It's been great being with you. This is here, Jay, Mel, and in this case, Joe. So Joe, Jay, and Mel, <laughs> over and out. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.